What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to take a look at a python package called pretty errors which allows us to make our error messages clearer more beautiful and to customize them the way we like so let us get right into it <laughs> All right, so the external Python package called pretty errors allows us to make our Python error messages as the name already suggests prettier, it allows us to make them clearer, and it allows us to customize them so that they end up looking the way we want them to look. And in this video today, I want to show you how to do that. It's actually quite simple, because the only thing that we need to do in order to transition from the core Python error messages to the prettier error messages is we have to import the module that we're going to talk about in this video today, and then everything happens automatically. And the only thing that we need to do manually is we can change the configuration, the styling, if we want to change the default style. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. So I want to start with a simple artificially crafted example in this video here. I want to use two files with two functions. One function is going to call the other function from the other file. And then the main script is going to call the first function just so we have some nested function calls. So we get uh, a longer error message so that we have something to show. And then we're going to look at a second example, which is going to be um, a more natural long error message. We're going to use scikit-learn and we're going to introduce a shape mismatch so that we get an error message that goes uh, into different layers just so we have something to uh, look at when we change the style. Uh, so I want to start here with a Python file, let's call it uh, myscript.py. This is going to contain uh, just the function, then we're going to have a second script calling this function. So we're going to say here, my function is going to take a parameter, let's say the parameter is a float. This is just a type in doesn't introduce any constraints here. Uh, and we're going to just add some lines of code here, just so we have something to, to look at. So printing something and we're going to maybe also import math so that we can do a check in here, we're going to say if not math dot is nan, and then parameters. So if it's not an invalid, not number value, we're going to print the following calculation or the result of the following calculation 20 divided by whatever this value is. And of course, you can see why this could be a problem uh, parameter one could be zero, and then we would get a zero division error, which is exactly what we're trying to trigger here. Um, and then we're going to open up a second file, I'm going to just import here now my script, I'm going to have some function here which is just going to do the following thing. It's going to say value equals zero, and it's going to call the my script dot my function with the value uh, zero, which means we're going to divide by zero. This is going to give us a zero, a zero division error. Um, and all I have to do is I have to call this function. So the code is not really important. I'm just writing this code to force an error message that has more than just a single line. Uh, you can see this is what it looks like. And in this case, it's not too bad because we can clearly see uh, everything that's going on. But it is not the best way to print, in my opinion, a Python error message. And what we can do now is we can install this external Python package called pretty errors by just opening up the command line typing pip or pip three install pretty dash errors like this. And all you have to do now to get better error messages is you have to import this external Python package. So just say import, and then pretty errors. And that is basically it. If I now run the script, you can see I get a different style of error message. Um, and I think this is way more concise, and it has colors and it shows you exactly what happened here. First of all, the error is a zero division error. It tells you that it basically happened at this line, this is where the division happens this line, um, or this my function here, which this is in uh, was called here in some function and the sum function was called here at line 10. So down here. Um, and this is just a way better overview. So you can see already that this looks way better, way more concise. Again, let's uh, switch back maybe to the default. Here you have to read what actually happened. Okay, I have a zero division error, everything's in one color, the file name is very long, we have the full path to the file, we have um, a lot of information here, it looks very bloated. If we use pretty errors, we have a very concise and beautiful error message, which is also as I mentioned, customizable, we're going to take a look at this here in a second. Um, let me show you a second example. Again, the, the code itself does not matter. If you don't know about machine learning, if you don't know what I'm doing here, 
it doesn't matter. I'm just forcing an error message. The content is irrelevant for this video. But I'm going to say SK learn underscore example, and I'm going to just write some code that is going to produce an error message. So I'm going to say import numpy s and p, and then from sklearn.pipeline, import pipeline from sklearn dot decomposition, I'm going to import PCA from sklearn dot data sets, I'm going to import make classification so that I can make some sample data from sklearn dot ensemble, I'm going to import a random forest classifier. And then from sklearn dot uh, pre processing, I'm going to import a uh, standard scalar. And I'm going to import also, or first of all, I'm not going to import pretty errors, I'm just going to leave it like that. And all I want to do here now is I want to create some data x y is going to be make classification and samples is going to be 1000. The important thing here now is we're going to have 20 features, random state of 42, for example, uh, we're going to create a pipeline. And the reason I do all this is just so we have some nested stuff. We have a pipeline, something happens in that pipeline. And uh, in the code in SK learn, we have stuff that happens. So we get a long error message. That is the goal. So create pipeline, what we want to do here is want to say steps equals, we're going to have a list of tuples, we're going to have first of all, standard scalar, it's going to be the first step of our pipeline standard scalar. If for some reason, by the way, you're interested in what I'm doing right now, and you don't want to just focus on the error message, but you also want to know what I'm doing here, I have a video on SK learn pipelines as well, if you want to learn about them. So PCA is going to be a PCA here. Now we're going to say we have 15 components. And we're going to say classifier is going to be the last one, this is going to be a random forest classifier with a default hyperparameters. And we're going to create that pipeline. Now pipeline is going to be equal to come on pipeline. And we're going to pass the steps here as a parameter. And we're going to say now return the pipeline. Again, you don't have to understand what I'm doing here to cause the error. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals underscore underscore main underscore underscore. Then what we want to do is we want to say p equals create pipeline, we want to create this new pipeline here. And we want to say we want to introduce some input that is bad. So we want to say x underscore bad is um, whatever x is. So this is going to be our um, our data that we made up here, I'm going to say now I only want to have the first uh, 10 features. So I'm going to say everything and 10 columns, or actually up until 10 columns like this. Uh, and I'm going to say fit the pipeline. So the, the problem is that I have a different shape, we have 15 components here, and we have 10 here, so that is going to cause a problem. And if I just run this now, you can see this long error message, we don't really see what's happening here. Now, of course, if you are a Python programmer, you know how to read this, it's not like this is too difficult, but it doesn't look too good. Right, you can see, okay, we have a value error, you can see where it's called and everything. But it looks very bloated, very, very um, one dimensional, it looks everything's red, or you have this purple here for the uh, file paths, it doesn't look very good. Um, now I can go ahead and import pretty errors to show you that this now looks much better. This looks much better, you can see exactly what is happening where. And if you have a problem that you don't see enough lines. So if you say, for example, okay, this is too sparse, I want to have more information, you can of course change that in the configuration. So we can go ahead now and say, pretty errors dot configure. And we can pass here. Uh, certain parameters, keyword arguments. So we can say, for example, I think by default, we have this hyphen here, as a separator, I can go ahead and change this. And I can call, uh, I can say the separator uh, character is uh, an asterisk, for example. And now you can see up here, I have this asterisk symbol, instead of the hyphen, I can also go ahead now and I can say file name display. Uh, and I can say how the file name should be displayed. So I think as of right now, let me just delete this. 
we have just the file name, right? I can go ahead now and I can say that the file name display should be equal to pretty errors file name extended. And then you would see we get the full path. And I can also have a file name full. I think this is yeah, just a full path. Um, yeah, so this is kind of interesting, or actually, I think the file name full is the full path. And I think file name extended, if I'm not mistaken, let me just check if this is true, uh, is from the current path, right? Isn't it? Not sure. Maybe we we go back and, and stuff like that. Uh, but you can change how this is done. I'm going to leave it at full. Uh, and then what we can do is we can say, for example, all sorts of different things, we can set the line color, the link color, um, we can also specify the formatting. So if I say line color equals, then I can say pretty errors, uh, dot red, and I can add a symbol, I can say, okay, give me a symbol here, for example, this shell symbol, and I can add something uh, in the end to make the rest of the line again, uh, the default color. So default config dot line color. And this will end up looking like this, we have the basic color, but we have this red uh, angle bracket in the beginning, and maybe we should add a space here. So you can see what this looks like, if you want to do it like that, you can change all the colors. Uh, and the interesting thing that I wanted to actually show you is you can go ahead and say lines underscore before and for this, you want to have a comma here, lines before equals five, for example, and lines after equals five. And when you do that, you're going to get way more of the error message. So you can see here, not for all these lines here, but for this one, you can see, we don't just get value error, we see uh, five lines after that and five lines before that to get the context of this. So this is also something that you can change. And of course, you can change all the colors, all the styling, I would say, uh, look up the documentation for this package, or at least the pip page. So the PyPI PI page. Uh, for this package, because there are a lot of configuration options. But the most simple way to use it is to just import it. And that's it. And this is super interesting. Uh, and super useful, because when you have long, long error messages, this is just a better way to understand what's going on. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.